He said, I don't want you to be like the hypocrites. That's his words. They love to pray being seen. They like to be seen. And they love to be heard. Not so with you. When you pray, I want you to enter alone. Get in your closet. Shut the door. I, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in, in maybe a little more detail. But I want, to, I want to help you here. First of all, you need to settle it. If you got to clear your schedule, I don't care what you have to do. If you're too busy to get alone with Jesus every day, you're too busy. Something needs cleared. Something needs cleared. Amen? <laughs> See, spiritual growth is not an event. You understand that? It's a process. To grow and to grow spiritually as a disciple of Christ and to be who God is calling you to be and to become, you must first grow in your relationship with Him. How can you have the mind of Christ if you don't know Him? And how can you know Him if you don't spend time with Him? How can you know His voice if you never allow him time to speak to you. Some of these things are so simplistic, but they've been so missed. See, you're never going to grow consistently without a prayer life. The prayer closet should become our most familiar and treasured place. The prayer closet should become our most familiar and treasured place. You know why? Because it's a special time between you and Jesus. It's a special time when just you and he are there and you can share your most intimate, detailed secrets of your life and there he is imparting to you things that you never dreamed you would ever understand but all of a sudden you begin to see like he sees and you begin to think like he thinks. I want to tell you, the key to carnality is your prayer life. If you want to overcome carnality, and when I mean carnality, I'm just thinking flesh thoughts. You know, Jesus said it this way, and it's amazing how we ignore him. He says, pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit's willing, but the flesh, it's weak. Who said that? Who said that? Jesus said that. I want to tell you, if you do not pray, your flesh will win every time. Your flesh is no match For prayer and prayerlessness is no match for your flesh. Jesus said that. Now, to enter into a prayer closet, and Pastor Foster touched on it last night so powerfully, you enter into an intimate fellowship with him. It's not... A ritual, it's not 
a routine. It's not out of force. It's not out of duty. See, the big danger in me preaching like this and teaching like this is that you could leave here not changed, just feeling guilty. And that's not what God's wanting tonight. This Bible study, this session at School of Prayer is not designed to make you feel guilty. I'm not trying to move you so you come up here, cry a bunch of tears because you just feel bad. You haven't prayed like you know you should. That is not my motivation at all. I'm really not interested in your tears. You know why? Because I've seen a lot of tears out of people that had no change. Sometimes tears and snot slinging is nothing more than guilt. I feel bad because I failed. I feel bad because I didn't pray. I feel bad because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And I feel terrible about it. And so we go to an altar, we ball it out. We're not really repenting. We're just crying because we feel so bad. We may say, I'm sorry, but we get up unchanged because our prayer was more out of guilt than a genuine heart change that said, I'm walking out of here different. One of the greatest shocks to me as a young pastor was when I realized I had not been taught repentance correctly. I measured people's repentance by their visual response. They cried, they shed tears. As I said, not trying to be gross, long snot, wall on the floor, go through all kinds of contrite positions. But then nothing changed. And I'll tell you who taught me the lesson. And then I began to really realize from a biblical perspective what repentance was. Brother Alex Maranakis, one of the men in our church at home, one of the elders now of our church. You know, when he came, we had just baptized a young lady. She got the Holy Ghost. And uh, they had went to school together. And Alex was a, a 1990s hippie. No, 1990s. He followed the Grateful Dead. He was a deadhead. I mean, van and all. He wore bib overalls, chains, beads, long black hair about down to his waist, goofy looking beard and mustache. Not that that's all. I'm just saying. He just, just, he just, he looked the part. Came in in his sandals and his love beads. He had, really, he wasn't that way in high school. But he went to Kent State University where that whole hippie scene took it. There's a spirit that reeks that whole place. That thing got a hold of him. And so she had just come to the Lord. Wednesday night, here comes this dude walking in the church. Now, normally I would be thrilled. Just guess, man. But something said, wait a minute. She just got the Holy Ghost. This is the trick. Devil's just trying to use this guy to pull this girl out of church. And so he sat there, and he, he's a quiet type guy. Didn't say two words. He sat there, and I still remember where he's at from the pulpit. He's right over here to the right. Just, just 